Nick Avocado, a long time trash fire on YouTube. We're going over today. This is the third part of our Girl World series. We got Mary with us. Of course, we got Dane. I'm Ken. We're going to look in more into Nick Avocado. And Nick has been one that we've watched several times in the past. And uh, a lot of people are very familiar with his story. But we're going to go over it for something you don't know and uh, kind of fill in some things that, you know, some, some interesting information that Mary's dug up, you know, all week. Got some good stuff. <laughs> Still no chair. Five million subscribers. You can have a chair. Sticking to it. <laughs> Do you want a chair? <laughs> I'm quite comfortable standing. I'm fine. <laughs> now we got Nick Avocado. Can the real Nick please stand up? Because who is Nick? This is what he used to be. The early life. Nicholas Perry. He was oh, yeah. born in Ukraine. May 19th, 1992. He was just a baby. Really? He was just a wee little baby. He was adopted during his infancy by an American family, and he was raised in Pennsylvania. Born in Ukraine, adopted mm -hmm. in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Okay, all right. So Nicholas had a natural talent for music and he dreamed of being a Broadway star. He moved to New York in 2013, but he ultimately found the competition and ruthlessness of the city to be too much for him. Yeah, nobody likes New York for, I mean, yeah. uh, facts. If, if you love New York, then someone lied to you or you're lying to yourself. And so he started vegan blogging. <laughs> <laughs> he founded his YouTube channel in 2014 with his focus on veganism and he abandoned it in 2016. He would vlog about his lifestyle and showcase his relationship with his now husband, Orlin. And then in 2016, he revealed his decision to leave the vegan lifestyle behind due to an overwhelming frustration with the community itself. Oh. Yeah, which I don't um. know how much you remember, but at that time... It was when I was also making content and veganism was such a big, big thing. Like yeah, there was, yeah, that's, that's where the meme came from. That time was like, if someone's a vegan, they will tell you kind of thing. Yeah, yeah there was a yeah, lot. That and CrossFit. Yeah, that CrossFit. Yeah. <laughs> CrossFit came later, actually. It was veganism oh, for a while. Did it? Then okay. CrossFit kind of got attached to it like a couple of years later. There was a lot of pressure on creators at this time. Like people would, you know, dissect photos of their food or like they would... Someone would say, oh, I ate this at a restaurant. And then people would look up the restaurant that's, and look at the menu. Not and vegan. Yeah, they, it, was, it, it was really intense. So wow. Nick Ocado was like at the forefront of it. He was like, I'm a proud vegan. He met his husband all in through a vegan Facebook group. And um, then in 2016, he just reached the point of. I'm done with these people. I'm, yeah. He, I'm he, done he, with New York. I'm done with the okay. vegans. <laughs> yeah. It's, it was a hypercritical community and it led to many influence to feel like they were never vegan enough. So that, that happens a lot on the internet with, with things that I guess I'll use the word like trend, like, like but being a vegan was the trendy thing. Um, and, but it goes from like, teaching people about it to everyone that has now learned about it, being hypercritical of everyone else and forming this toxic community. And then afterwards it's like in a healthier place where it should have been to begin with. It's like that, that, uh, that, that video, the mole video where one of them wasn't vegan and everyone else was vegan and they, you guys reacted to it. And that one lady was like, well, Taco Bell's not vegan. And at South Patch kids, they're not vegan. And so this, these people who were vegans, they were not the moles, were being made to feel like, well, maybe I'm not a vegan then because of this one really obsessive, hypercritical woman. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, that was what was going on. The vegan gatekeeping and then like the, the, the hierarchy <laughs> of being a vegan and all that. Imagine gatekeeping for something for you're something like real, that. You're not that a real crazy. vegan. You're not a you're real vegan. So like, real should, should you guys like, be like supporting each other, lifting each other up? You know, hell, oh, you know that's actually it's not vegan. You know, let me let me let me tell you why instead of being like, ah. yeah, I believe every little effort to do something that's good for the world should be supported rather than being seen as like, well, you're doing that, but you're also doing all these bad things. It's like, okay, well, you know, start somewhere, right? I agree with that. Yeah, you got to do something. You know, start making <laughs> some sort of progress towards good. So began the mukbangs. Nick was one of the first, if not the very first, men in America to make mukbang content. And the risk oh, paid man. off. He was rewarded with a whole new community of viewers who quite simply loved to watch him eat. He must have hated them vegans a lot. <laughs> just a lot. He's like, you know what? Screw you, vegans. I'm going to eat all this food. Yeah, I do personally believe that his drastic switch from veganism to eating large volumes of animal products on camera was a very deliberate F you to the obsessive vegan vigilantes that would criticize him. 
We all talk about the slippery slope of that. It's just it's bad behavior being rewarded and doing it more and getting to the point to where he is now. But yeah, over time, the volume of food, his personality, and his body all grew. He began to play a character. His more extreme content moved onto other platforms such as Patreon and only. He does have an OnlyFans. I forgot about that. Yeah, he's got an OnlyFans. Oh yeah, I forgot. You, yeah. can, you can see him. You can see old Nick Avocado do some things. Mm. Really want to go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> But yeah, the, the Nick Avocado is definitely is definitely a character. If you've watched the content, I mean, like, like here, just look at this this picture right here. It's hundred oh, percent. He's got to put it on. There's no way that normal, yeah, I'll say normal person could ever think like this. It's a character, Ken. There's no way I'm gonna believe a grown man took a turd <laughs> in a chair while he was eating at the table. With I'm not gonna on. believe it. <laughs> <laughs> With pants on. <laughs> so over time, his content evolved. His mukbangs became bigger and bigger, and so did his personality. The change wasn't immediate enough for people to instantly know that he was putting on an act. But with each new upload, the character of Nikocado became clearer. He was loud. He was aggressive. He would cry, scream, and supposedly shit himself on camera for his viewers. It was <laughs> fetish work. And whatever he made that wouldn't make it through the YouTube guidelines was put onto OnlyFans, where his viewers could pay him to push the boundaries of his own self-comfort mm. further and further until they no longer existed. Mm-hmm. So the consequences, obviously this is going to go to a bad place when you build a, a platform of people who want to see you just eat all the food and and act the way that he did. But anyway, yeah, even though Nick put on a performance for his viewers, the damage he does to his marriage, body, and mind are real. There's no way to physically separate the character he's created and his actual self, which I don't know. I think as a viewer, you kind of lump them together. You kind of think that, this is how, you know, he's, he's losing his mind. He's crazy. But I, I, I 100% believe that Nick is like, just like everybody else off camera, but yeah. is kind of stuck in the cycle of he needs to make this content, make a spectacle of himself to make money, to, you know, to, so he can pay his bills. Yeah. I mean, he definitely probably, I, I'm assuming he hits the stop button and then boom. <laughs> he feels the weight come off a little bit, you know, and he just stops like, oh. recording after he does it. Right. He's like, Oh God, I'm gonna go throw up. You know, or throw something. all this crap away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then, I mean, but but like you said, though, there are the consequences because you can't fake eating all the bad calories that he was eating and and having all that damage to his body. Mm-hmm. You know, is is a, is a real thing. Yeah, absolutely. So he quickly learned that outrage and scandal garnered him more views and money than he could ever receive by being nice, and so he lent into it. And he would continue to lean and lean and lean until he fell into a pit that I don't believe he ever saw himself pulling his way out of. While Nick Accardo is and was a character, that character resided within the body of Nicholas Perry. Nicholas could not remove his Nick suit once he turned the camera off. It doesn't matter how much someone removes themselves from the character they're playing. When it is that deeply integrated into their real life, the damage will leak through. I always kind of wonder, like, people talk about the marriage thing. And I, I assume that his husband's, like, in on it, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. They're like, playing along. They're playing together. They're acting together. But if you looked at me and screamed in my face and told all of your viewers that you hated me and uploaded that to the internet, even when the camera's are off, when we're, like, alone together, sitting on the couch watching a movie, those feelings, like, that that intensity like you don't your brain just doesn't go oh he was just playing pretend like that there is an effect Whatever, mary you wake up in the morning right. after having a bad dream and are mad at me so i don't know it's true <laughs> <the same> <laughs> but anyway the brain know, is a saying. really complex thing so i really think they're able to separate themselves as much as they want and be like sorry hun i was just you know playing our game for money but i really do i i think it's unavoidable that there is some leak through of the damage that that does oh it has to be it has to be some i think uh i think nick is kind of the he, he's the example that all the current twitch and kick streamers use to get views because this is they don't mm. go to like the same extremes of uh of eating and destroying their body but it's all like outrage and it's all staged over top. crap uh, over the top because people will watch it you know because streamers Whenever YouTube makes a video, the video lives there, but streamers, they have to be streaming to be live. And the only way they have that longevity is through clips. And so they have to get these little moments of insanity clipped. And that's like <clears throat> their, their, their whole business model, what they're going for the whole time is to get these crazy clips that the internet will share and will go viral and um, then come watch the stream. And it's very similar to me in my mind on content creation to the, the stuff that uh, 
that Nick does. But then you got 2021 where everyone heard about Nick at this point because he had beef. He had beef with Charlie. He uh, had a, a meat candy video. Uh, I told Felix about Nick, and then Felix made a video about him. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, considered his, his best year, you know? <laughs> yeah, 2021 was Ricardo Avocado's best year. He had conflicts with PewDiePie, Penguin Zero, Meat Canyon, and just about everyone else that mentioned his name. With any breath of acknowledgement, Nick latched on and would squeeze out each and every drop of attention he could. During a few of these conflicts and collaborations, he just for a few moments, let the mask slip. The great discussion as to where the character of Nick Ocado began and ended was coming to a head, and the viewers were making it known that they would like to see the real man behind the mask, and it would seem like Nick was listening. Yeah, I talked about this before too. Cause Nick's not, he's not an idiot. He read, he understands the feedback, and so when people would be like, oh, oh, you know, oh, the real, oh, you know, I wish you would stop acting like this, and he would like, kind of like bait it and like like a carrot on the stick like come on you know come on yeah you know, you know, look at look into it more you know i think i think it's the guy's own purpose which i still think is I mean, obviously it's real because uh, you can't you do not act like that all the time unless you are just insane uh <laughs> but yeah definitely on purpose in my opinion and we can even fast forward a little bit to like 2023 too to when he him and uh Oompaville were making videos together like they had like a little podcast together and they were doing um collaboration content and they seem like they're getting along very well and i kind of i'll take credit for this one we made a video about it dane about pointing <laughs> out how uh Oompaville was getting like a lot of views from these videos and nick wasn't getting anything like as far yeah, as like, the comparison <laughs> and soon after they stopped making content together so i don't know if someone saw a video or, or what or if they came to that conclusion themselves but yeah something happened <laughs> Weird, huh? You know, it's my bad if I mess something up. You know? All right, so we got demands for redemption. Creators and viewers alike began calling for an unveiling of Nick's true self and promised positivity following a redemption arc. But Nick's too smart for that. Nick knew better. Nick knew that if he stopped being the character and started just acting like a normal person, that all those views he was getting would just go away, and that's the deadly trap, right? There have been yeah. statements from Nick that would suggest he wants it too. If he's doing what viewers have said they wanted, why does no one care? Because I can tell you why. I can tell you exactly why. Because viewers, they say what they don't mean. They say the nice thing. They say, oh, you know, I hope you get better. Oh, you're sick. Oh, take all the time you need. But when you take that time off and they like, go and they, they just don't come back. <laughs> just, yeah. <laughs> Play what you want. Play what you want. We'll watch it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Do whatever Thanks. you want. Yeah. Yeah. I put a, put a case cooking video up last week and that thing did horrible. Anyway, Mary, what do you have for that? Viewers said they wanted Nick to lose weight, calm down and stop following his passions again. And it would seem like deep down Nick wanted that for himself too. And so he started to. He slowed down on the uploads. He told his viewers that he was losing weight. And this is the path forward that everyone wanted, right? So why does nobody care anymore? Because hmm. it's content creation. There's a lot of good, like a lot of people, that, people that do it, they get paid a lot of money and they get to have their dream job. But there's also some very toxic aspects of it as well. And this is one of them. If you have, if you build an audience based on negativity and you try to change it to positivity. All the people that are there for the negativity are gone. And for him to go on like a weight loss journey, they're only waiting for the end result and not the journey itself. So if he lost a bunch of weight and showed back up in a year and it was like, or two years and it was like skinny, everyone would talk about it. But right. during that time of him trying to be better, nowhere near the amount of people that care about him destroying his body are going to be there to see him help himself. And that's just a fact. So, so, same old same. <laughs> He's made no serious change to his content because why would he? He doesn't get rewarded for that. You know, it isn't new or interesting anymore. Uh, everyone knows it's fake and it's just boring now. True. So, Nick is kind of stuck in, we've talked about this before too, to where he is just doing the same thing over and over again. Even, even on our channel, it's like what we're doing here with Mary is a new thing and it's being received very well because you have to do new things. You have to evolve your content. You have to change it up into more interesting things like us just reacting like watching something and us just reacting to it does not do as well as it used to and us doing these informational videos that tell you about stuff that you're you don't care to go look up your own but you're happy to watch a video about it those do way better and that's just what we have to evolve to nick on the other hand his evolution is uh i think he's i think he's peaked <laughs> i think he's reached his peak evolution yeah 2021 yeah. was his peak and without some kind of serious change it, it's it's got nowhere to go from here so 
Despite it seeming like Nick does want out from the mukbang world, he has not yet made that serious change to his content. His mukbang still involves screaming, crying and overeating in excess. And it isn't new or innovative anymore. To the average person, it's just incredibly hard to watch. Just like his deliberate cutoff from veganism, he needs to say F you to the mukbang community and throw himself into whatever his next phase of life will be. And if he doesn't, the only people left peering down to that deep, dark pit will be the people who don't want him to ever climb out. I think Nick is waiting for a TLC show. That's what I, that's what I think is happening. I think, oh, wow. I think that's yeah. what he's going for. That. I think, I think he's just holding out, waiting for that TLC show. Maybe he already's got one. Maybe that's why he's like being a little more quiet. You know, maybe he's got one going on or not. You know, I can see not. him pushing Big Ed out the out the picture completely. You know what I mean? <laughs> out Big Ed goes, and in comes Nick Akato. That's, so that's, that's the move. Him and Amber Lynn can like have a have a, like a duo thing. They can like, oh man, that'd be great. Have a t- there your TLC. Put them together. Thousand pound goals. You know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be their weight loss journey together. It'd be yeah, the new the new YouTube right. duo, and they would be so toxic to each other that it'd be freaking fantastic. <laughs> Nick would be directly to- to- uh, toxic, and then Amber Lynn would be like passive toxic. <clears throat> it'd be so good. And then it may ask you, like, well, why doesn't he do it? Well, like, we've kind of talked about it. You know, the, uh, changing his content's hard. It's, it's always hard to change your content. You have to do it slowly over time. Or, like, breakneck changes rarely work out. It's a big risk. You think he's scared to show that vulnerability. Uh, I don't know if Nick's scared of anything, <laughs> to be honest. But uh, I do think he's kind of, like, in a, like a spot that he finds comfortable and wants to keep it going as long as he can. But, um, I mean, but there's no envelope to push anymore. You know what I mean? Is that... Is that gonna sustain him? You know. Yeah, he already he already had his era of like wearing his uh his oxygen mask every <laughs> thumbnail. You know. Yeah. 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 I feel like committing to this change will be incredibly difficult for Nick, and that's because I really don't think he knows who he is or what sort of content he actually wants to create. He has spent his entire life putting on a show in order to protect himself from ever feeling truly vulnerable. It's easy to just quote Amberlynn Reed and scream and shout and act like an oversized toddler. And then when people tell you that they hate it, you just say, oh, well, they don't know the real me. My hope would be that he's saved enough money for himself that he can stop cold turkey and just disappear for a while. Spend six months or a year figuring himself out. And then if he wants to come back to YouTube, which I'm sure he will, because he is and always has been a performer, Perhaps he will be able to return with a stronger sense of self and some more authenticity and not just to sell merch, Gabby Hanna style. You're so nice, Mary. <laughs> Me and Dana over here are like, oh, whatever, you know, Nick. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Mary's like, I hope the best. Oh, I, I truly do. <laughs> it's not like none of this is beyond his control. Oh, is, my, is my opinion of it. So I it's like, fully agree. In a way, I, I see where Mary's coming from, though, right? Like with the he's using the mask. Because he doesn't want to, you know, he's, he's vulnerable, doesn't want to show his true self because he might be rejected. But at the same time, he's using that mask to make a lot of money. <laughs> you know <laughs> what I mean? So yeah. so, That's so true. So at that point, you know what I'm saying? Like, take the mask off, forget about it. Who cares, bro? Like, you're going to be all right. You got, you know, he's going to be all right. It's like, I understand, like, you know, oh, he needs help or whatever like that. But he also, he, he smells it in the water. It's like blood in the water. He's a shark. <laughs> Is that sympathy? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And he doesn't need to be incentivized to do better for himself. Him just, be, you know, the incentive is him being healthier or being in a better mental place or, and all that. It doesn't need to be the the viewership that is the incentive. Like, like if he wants to right. lose weight and is not getting the views and doesn't do it, that shouldn't be the, the, the topic of conversation because that's the whole trap and the whole reason that, in my opinion, he is where he is, is because that's the mindset. I'm Nick Akato out. You know what I mean? Like I, we've seen the guy. He does the same thing. The he, his viewership, I feel like they feel like the same. He's not pushing the envelope anymore, and they're kind of like, eh, just be you because we want something different. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> that's how I feel. I'm just kind of waiting for something different from Nick. Yeah, well, it's it's the same thumbnails every time. Like, look at these thumbnails. Guys, Literally, guys, just the same thumbnails over and is, over. If Nick is watching this. It's, you're just gonna, you're just like doing the thing <laughs> that viewers do to make the situation worse. <laughs> you need to push the envelope more. You need to like make him crazier I, no, thumbnails. I'm just saying, that's how he's already. That's I'm just saying. That's the audience he's built. You know. <laughs> That is it. That is the third the third installment of Girl World from my beautiful wife, Mary. Thank you, Mary. Yay! That's it. Leave a like, leave a comment, do all that cool stuff. If today's your birthday, happy birthday. Stay tuned, my friends. I love you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.